guys are in for a treat. Stephanie Clark, what are we going to do today? We are going to simplify a photo and create a really lovely, breezy summer day. All right. Looking forward to it. Let's get this show yeah. started. It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. Welcome to Art School Live. I'm Eric, and we are here every weekday at 12 noon Eastern time. We started at the beginning of the pandemic. We went seven months seven days a week. Then we went to five days a week and we've done it ever since then. We are teaching art. We have artists from all over the world who are our guests and we're teaching you so that you can pick it up or learn it or get better or whatever you want. Our guest today is Stephanie Clark and she is a fabulous artist. As you can see, she does these incredible florals and I love florals. So it's going to be fun to see uh, what she's going to teach us today. Uh, we have a prize for you today. If you are watching and you leave a message in the comments, whether you're watching live or on replay, you can get chosen uh, to win my book, Make More Money Selling Your Art, uh, Proven Techniques for Turning Your Passion into Profit. Uh, the winner of the last prize was Deborah Bryant in Kusha, Idaho, wherever that is. And we have a, a terrific uh, gift for you today. It's 45 pastel pointers from the pros if you're interested in pastel painting, which I am. Uh, pastel live.com slash 45 tips. Now we're going to get right to our guest, Stephanie Clark. Stephanie, take it away. Thank you so much. So All right. I, I'm going to uh, basically simplify this beautiful photo that we have in front of us. And I'm going to create something that looks terribly complex, but I'm going to break it down so that you can see my process. I'm self-taught. So I've worked out how it works for me to start um, a painting and how I can get depth in my paintings. So basically what I do is I peel off all the intricate information here and I'm looking way, way back. So when I start a painting, I'm looking deep into my painting first up. And what I like to do is I like to get a few darks in just to work out firstly my composition and my light. So I'm just going, what I will do firstly is just kind of map out a bit of a composition and go, well, I'm going to have a little pathway kind of over here and I'm going to have a little dance of florals. So I just use a pan pastel and one of the little uh, applicators and I'm going to sh sort of show the light coming through here. So I'll give myself a bit of an idea of my um my composition, where my focal flowers are going to sit, where my lightest lights are going to sit. In here, I'm just going to pop my lightest light, which, you know, is going to sit about there. It gives me, my backgrounds really are my waypoint. So I like to work out where I'm going to go. And it's almost like an underpainting, but it's a very obviously very abstract underpainting. Now I do start with my darks. I love three darks. I have, I love Sennelier 463 and I use that in every single painting I've ever done. I love the, uh, obviously every pastel artist loves Terry Ludwig's um, eggplant, but I also have, every floral artist should have a deep green. So I love the 179 in Sennelier. It is absolutely beautiful so Can i ask you a I'm, question yes okay you have that little piece of uh, paper off to the side is that a standard thing yes. that you do so you can kind of test the color before you lay it down <laughs> absolutely i do well usually i just use the backing board as you can see um for my own purposes but if i'm teaching i always do have a, a little piece because if we swatch then we can kind of work out our values a uh, really important thing is, though, that you need to, whatever colour you're painting on, you need to have that the same so that you can test your values. Okay. Now, I want to yeah. ask you, I, I also yes. wanted to mention to everybody, you're in Australia and it's 2 o'clock in the morning there. You are it a is. trooper for, for being <laughs> here with us today. I will paint at any hour of the day. If somebody invites me to paint, I will paint. I am so <laughs> passionate about painting. I don't mind what time of the day it is. 
I absolutely love to paint. I, I've been, um, yeah, I haven't been painting that long, but I am a complete addict. I absolutely love it. So it's not a chore at all. Doesn't matter what time. So I'm on pastel mat now. With pastel mat, I've worked. I've devised um, a little. I guess it's a little process for me. I work from the back to the front. So I'm I'm working from out of focus to slowly coming into focus. Now the way that I can get my pigments to do what I want them to do and layer many 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 layers on my on my um, pastel mat is by uh, pushing the pigment in gently into well sometimes it's not that gently but pushing my pigment into the paper to set it. So I'm going to I will describe it as a dry underpainting, but. I'm, I spend sometimes I spend more time more time on my um, actual underpainting and my you know my background than I do my subject. I think well that because matters for me, because that's what gives you depth. But I'm I've, curious now. You didn't tell us what kind of paper. Or if you did, I missed it. Yeah, pastel mat. Yes, pastel mat. Okay, now pastel is that mat. is that a sanded paper? It's no, no, it's a soft paper. It's a very okay, soft paper. I wondered because otherwise yeah, you wouldn't smooth. have any fingerprints left when you No, that is exactly right. The only time I wear a glove is if I am on a sanded paper and my preference is for Lux Archival. I love that paper and what it can do. Um, so that's one time. Also, I love to... Um, if I wear a glove, I'll put it, if I need another five clean fingers, uh, especially during a, a, a session, I, if I haven't got time to go and wash my hands, which quite often I don't, um, I will put a glove on. And the only, only other time I will wear a glove is if I have a manicure that I want to save. So they're the three <laughs> times I wear a glove. Yeah, I would and imagine that, that's kind of tough on manicures. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. My well, I manicures. want to say hi to our audience from all over. We've got somebody from Tanzia, Tanzia, uh, Alberta, uh, Germany, Norway. Oh my! You got them pulling oh them in goodness. from everywhere. Everybody's very curious. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. That's fantastic. Welcome, yeah. welcome. Yeah. So I'm basically just looking at what I want to, where I want my light to go. I'm really concentrating on getting my lights in the correct spot so that I can, it, it basically shows me where I want to place um, my subjects. But, you know, really, that's, it is a super important thing for me to have all this down. I do exaggerate colour. So um, there will be times where you'll look at it and go, I'm not sure what she's up to there, but, you know. Um, I want to. I want to ask. I keep interrupting you. I apologize. No, 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 no. Don't. Yeah. So, um, I have. I've been telling a lot of beginners lately, people who have never painted, uh, mm -hmm. that the very, very best place to start is with pastel. And yeah. the, the reason I say that is because we're already familiar with coloring when we're kids, and we already know hand-eye coordination, and yeah. uh, and it. You have really shown how how simplified it can be you know you're not working on right now being precious you're working on blending what would you Absolutely. say to the beginners i would say you pick it up have a go and there's no pressure for me there's you know have a have a turn um don't be frightened to put pigment down because paper it's it's i think it's the most forgiving medium that there is out there so I would honestly say um, just immerse yourself in, ha in having a feel of the pastel in your hand and picking it up and putting it on the paper for how it feels good for you. So I guess over the last little while, what I've done is I have worked out what works for me, but I would definitely say you need to, you need to make friends with pastels and just see how they go on for you. Don't, there's no right or wrong. I honestly, you know, I teach all over the world and there's, you know, some people will say, oh, my goodness, it's I just don't know if I'm doing it right. If it feels good in your hand, just do it. Have a go. Yeah, I like that that term, make friends with pastels. Yep, 
Absolutely. The, well, and know, I, 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 I will tell you that I made friends with pastels because, you know, we have pastel live coming up and, and two, two years ago when we did the first one, I felt obligated to try and learn it because I was asking people to attend and yeah. I, you know, I'm normally an oil painter and it just, it, first off, I was able to do things with pastel that I cannot do with oil in terms of brilliance yeah. of color and certain kind of effects. But also Absolutely. now I've realized that there are times when pastel is the only way I can get the, the look that I want. So it, but it really expanded my uh, repertoire, if you will. Yes. And I don't think we, any of us uh, stick with the one, you know, I don't think we stick with the one medium. I think once you're immersed in art, I think any medium is whatever's it's so immediate pastel is beautifully immediate one of the reasons i got into pastel or one of the reasons i think that i have um really loved that i do really love pastel is that i was super time poor so it is something that you know if people say oh look i, I just haven't got time to paint pastel will allow you very, very quickly, pastel will allow you to walk in, put some strokes down and walk out. There's no drying time. There's no, you know, you can be time poor and create. And well, what I, I find is that sometimes I have to put, you know, I go into the studio and my colors are dry. I got to put new colors out. And, you know, yeah. so if you're in it's a hurry, so this is perfect. Yes. Absolutely. And yeah, like, um i in in a previous job i worked 12 hours a day but i still painted every single day so i always what say to myself i always say to my students for a living? um i was a practice manager for three ophthalmic surgeons so wow. i ran i ran my background is medical um i was a theater nurse for a long time and i um <laughs> So, yeah, I worked 12 hours a day. I ran three studios, uh, studios, I ran three surgeries, and we operated at, uh, oh, gee, three hospitals. So, oh, you know, it was a busy job, but I still painted every day. So people who say, uh, use the excuse, oh, look, I just don't have time, and I'll say to my students, don't come around here with you, come around here. I know how easy it is to say, oh, no, look, I'm just too busy. What it's we not a matter of not having time. It's a matter of making the make, time, allocating Absolutely, it. absolutely. And pastels give us that opportunity where, like you say, we don't have to put paper, we don't have to put, um, uh, you know, new paint out. All we need to do is step into there, have a piece of paper and off you go. And you yeah. don't have to spend a lot of time. Now, you can see that I'm kind to just starting to work out where my life is going. And I know it, it seems that it's a lot, you know, pushing this into the pastel mat, the pigment. It's so immediate. It's so, like, for me, it's so beautiful to touch the pastels, to, you know, um, I feel like I don't want to get all um, Go for it. Philo philosophical, but, you know, like I'm at one with a pastel when I'm here. And I'm, I'm, I've worked out a way that I can quickly walk in. And I'm sure the fact that I was time poor over, you know, with my previous work, that that's the reason why I can walk in, quickly put something down and walk away and feel like I've had. Sometimes it was only 15 or 20 minutes, but it was something every day. And I do paint every single day. Every day off, huh? Every day. If I don't paint, I start getting very twitchy. So twitchy, <laughs> twitchy you know, a little bit, uh, I need to paint. I'm not breathing properly. I need to paint. I want when to say I hello was, to uh, Mumbai, India, who's watching, also to the United Kingdom. Thank you. Wow. Oh, yeah, we got a worldwide <laughs> audience here. You are, you're <laughs> just pulling them in, baby. <laughs> That's so lovely. Thanks for coming, everyone. Don't, don't be right. nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> peak, peak viewing is never more than 160, 200,000. Oh, oh, no, no. Thank you. Thank you so much for making me feel so much better about that. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs friends? I don't know. Oh, dear. I need friends. I don't have oh, any friends. <laughs> neither. So what you can see is I'm laying down 
and I'm looking at my out of focus. So as I'm coming closer now, I'm starting to look at where the light's just going to, where that light kisses. I'm checking my values. I've gone much lighter up here. But what I'm doing now is starting to think, wow, I need to start filling in my mid-ground. This is all out of focus. This is going to show my viewer where I want them to look. Um, and it, it is super important that we do have that story. I love a good story of light. I'm a bit, a bit of a storyteller. I don't mind a good story. And so now this is, and as an artist, this is where we get to jump in and go, oh, you know what? I want to tell them this and I want to tell them that. And this is where I get, I do get, you may just have to slow me down and just, because I do paint fast, but I'm just like, oh, now, okay, I want to, assume that there might be a couple of little flowers so at this point i'm starting to leave a few marks that are lost and found i'm after that lost and found edge so i'm also where i want my lightest light i'm making note that i want my lightest light right next to my darkest dark because that's our contrast that's where we want to pull our viewer in and go okay this is where i want you to discover i want you to have a look and really I want your brain to be in enjoying inside this path. I want to tell a story. And I think it's the, the beauty of the pastels, regardless of whether they're round, square, or indifferent, because I've got I've got enough pastels to last 62 lifetimes, my husband says. Oh, so really? absolutely. I am the president of the Pastel Addict Society. If there's a new oh, pastel oh. out there, I have to have it. So yeah, I've got pastels from every corner of the globe. And I just, I just think, well, you know, now I have to use them all. And, but now, like, I think it's really important to understand that it doesn't matter whether they're hard, soft or indifferent, you can make the marks. This is the beauty of the, like, there's magic in these pastels. I honestly very rarely think that it's me that's doing the magic. It's these, it's the makers of these gorgeous sticks that give you, us. You know, what's a tragedy is that you just have no enthusiasm whatsoever. I know. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I really need to up my game, don't I? <laughs> Hello, Slovenia. Welcome. Slovenia. Oh, wow. Oh, some people in Australia tuning in. You've got some friends. Oh, wow. Hi, guys. G'day, everyone. G'day. G'day. <laughs> I, I've never been to Australia. I'm coming. Hello, Netherlands. Oh, oh the Netherlands. Yeah. So you can see now that I've built my pathway. You can see what we're up to. What do you mean? You built, what do you mean a pathway? You see the pathway here? See the light? That light coming down my pathway? And it's almost like in my brain I can see this finished. So what well, I've built my story of light. I've told my viewer exactly where I want them to look. Okay. I want them to come, yeah, I want them to come down into here and I'm going to lead them down in there with the florals. So for me, this is where I want everyone to look, just this little section of light in here. Okay. So I'm really, I very rarely use white in my um, art until the end because I love to play with those, you know, the highlights of our values. I really love to play yeah. in that area. Yep. So I am going to just bring in just a few little lost and found edges. Now, I do use big, chunky pastels. I use very skinny pastels. I actually don't mind what sort of pastel is as long as it's a pastel. Now, I'm going to start putting in some strokes, like I said, just lost and found. Stephanie, just, I'm going to so, just tell you something. Yeah, you have to hear yeah. this because of your background. Harriet okay. says, Obstetri obstetrician on call here, enjoying a quiet moment watching your lesson. <laughs> know what you oh, mean bless. about limited time. We make it work oh. when we can. Harriet, you are a rock star. Yay. Yay. Go, Harriet. Absolutely. Where, where are you watching yep. from, Harriet? Okay, we also have, let's see, Denmark, South Africa. Did I say that? Wow. That's crazy. It is crazy. Well, I just really hope that um, Harriet gets a break. And Well, we need to all give up, everybody in the comments, give a pat on the back for our medical professionals. They've been through Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And if you're on call too, that's something as a theatre nurse, that was something that we definitely did quite a bit of. Yeah. Oh, that's really looking 
Interesting. So, so now I'm I'm building these ones that are out of focus. I'm leading your eye down to this pathway. I'm leading you into where I want you to look. And this is where I think I struggle to uh, paint sitting down. I have to stand up. I feel like, and I know this is a bit dramatic, you know, but I do love a bit of drama. Um, I love, I feel like I, I need to stand up and wave my arm because I'm a little bit of a conductor with the orchestra. You know, oh. I'm, I'm telling these little flowers to, this is where I need you. So I guess if, if there's something I would love my viewers to have a look at, it's how my arm moves around. You know, step back from your work. Um, make some marks. Don't be frightened to make some marks. So I'm just filling in where what I'm basically doing at this point is my mid ground. And I'm just throwing a little bit of, you know, a little bit of light. I've, I've changed my values a few times. You can see I should probably put that up there, shouldn't I? Yes, you should. Dark. Yes, indeed. Dark, mid. You were supposed to remind me. Dark, mid and light. So, you know a few little value changes there and it, i'm telling my viewer even very subtly but i'm telling my viewer this is where i want you to look because well, the other thing life. i want to point out to people is that you're not rendering in other words you know you're not drawing every little petal of every little flower which nope. is the tendency that a lot of us have want to do you're just yeah. making you're just making marks at this point, all I'm doing is filling in my mid-ground because the, the depth has been created with my um, the outer focus. But absolutely, the, the rendering doesn't come until later. The rendering will come where I, my focal points, where I want my viewer to really um, be concentrated, where I want them to look. I'm, I'm manoeuvring my, even, even with... Just gentle little strokes. What I'm doing is creating a, a a scene where my viewers are they're filling in the gaps, like yeah. they're doing the hard work. I'm not doing the hard work. Though. I want to tell you one other comment here, S Stephanie. Evie yeah. George says I've gained so much just from watching you put the background oh. in, and I wondered how to paint a similar subject. And I think I can transfer what you've done with oil pastel to oils. That is so true, Evie, you know, that when I started learning pastels, I discovered that it made me a better oil painter because I discovered oh. techniques that you can use in pastel that, that can be applied to oil that I never thought of. Oh, fantastic. That's great. See that, I guess that's, yeah, that's the importance of us all sharing, isn't yeah. it? Really? Sharing is caring. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, and, you know, that's the whole thing. You don't, you know, I don't set out to teach people how to paint like Steffi Clark. What I do set out is for people to paint the best paint, the best way, like they can glean what they can off me and and apply it to their own art. And that to me is absolutely beautiful. If somebody walks away and says, oh, my gosh, I can actually work with that and I can use that, oh, that's my job done. Like that makes me so happy. So I'm just subtly putting in a little bit. I don't try and paint everything I see. What I'm what I'm trying to do is just suggest. You can see up if you. I'm not sure if you can zoom in, but if you can see that these strokes are rudimentary, They're, there's nothing in there at this point that really shows what type of flower it is or anything like that. I guess what I'm trying to do at this point is just suggest just suggest some flowers looking at you know where i want much bigger strokes down in here where i want the the drama to be where the quiet area will be and filling in these mid i think everybody can do the outer focus everybody can do the in focus it's this mid mid range that mid ground that a lot of people struggle with and this is where you need to stand up and conduct and you know throw your pastels around make some marks you if you you could drive yourself absolutely bonkers if you tried to um paint all that detail but you don't need to you really don't need to i'm here to tell you you don't need to just really put some put some lovely 
marks in. I want to still get rid of some of the hard edges, so I'm just touching them. At this point, we're not, you know, we're rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. With pastel mat too, I should have told you when I was doing the background, with pastel mat you can, um, uh, the, when, you, when you look at pastel mat underneath a microscope, it actually looks like Velcro. So the the process that I have found that works for me is that you can see yeah is that um, I'm pushing the pigment into the pastel mat and that then allows me to pop a lot of layers on. Now you can see that this paper has already taken. I'm going to say probably 10 or 15 layers of pastel already and I'm nowhere near finished. So, you know, it's a it's a beautiful paper to use and the process that I use and it works for me is that, yeah, it allows me to just get so, much, so many layers and still keep my, um, still keep my, my painting clean, if you like, clear, not muddy. But this is where, you know, now that I'm coming into my mid mid ground, you know, um, I'm I will stop blending. If yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Is anyone even still there or have you all gone home? Yeah, we all went home. No, of course. Oh, you all went home. <laughs> I thought you may have. Yeah. So yeah, that's this paper is absolutely beautiful for that. It really is. It's a it's a magnificent paper. So I'm just going to start moving a, a little. You can see that we've just sort of dots. It, it is really dots and dashes, you know, to to fill in this mid ground. You could put and secret I've, messages in Morse code. Oh look, dots I and dashes. Oh, there we go. I really need to explore that. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? It'll be the uh, Steffi Clark Da Vinci Code. Oh. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Absolutely not. So really just moving some, some of this, you know, bits and bobs here and there. And then I might start coming in with a little bit of colour, just a little bit of a lighter value. And you can see... There's a couple of little light spots up in here. So I might just bring in just a little bit of light to sort of, and it's used just a little hard pastel. And I'm going to just throw a bit of, a little bit of light where I want you to look. So I'm just, yeah, really just filling in the gaps. Over here, I can see these ones here, a little bit more in focus. So I might just pop in just a couple just to start your eye thinking oh okay what's she trying to tell me just there so i might just grab a little bit of our little blue light over dark dark over light i think that goes for every single um medium doesn't it it's just mm. a yep and i might just grab if you guys are digging this put a comment in the section comment section and also remember you can win a prize today's prize is the book make more money selling your art which is an opportunity to get a free book uh so make sure you leave a comment comment so now i start looking at where my life and and exacerbating and you know um really starting to go okay she's trying to tell me this let me let me just put in a couple of these. Look, at some point, I don't I don't ever have a set um, flower in mind. I've painted that many flowers. Sometimes the pastels tell me what they want to be. At one, at one point, not that long ago, maybe a couple of years ago, I was painting what I thought were roses, and they all ended up as nasturtiums because that not one of them wanted to be a rose. <laughs> so I think I think a good idea too when you are painting. Just be free. Don't have so many expectations upon yourself. Just let it, let it um, be open to change. Be open to, oh, you know what? That actually looks like that. Let's run with that. Give yourself freedom to, I feel like giving yourself freedom to create and not be tied to what you're looking at. I really believe that is, that's a massive step in confidence and I would have to say, once I started to back myself, and um, and obviously, you know, being in the being in the uh, industry that I was, 
my theory was, and I know this sounds very flippant, but my theory was it's a piece of paper and some pastel. Nobody died today, so it was a good day. So if yeah. it doesn't work, we wash it off and we go again. That's and true. We have I mean, you don't have yeah. that kind of pressure anymore. I do not. No. And it's great. No, no. Instead, I'm on pastel uh, art school live, just painting to people in Mumbai. No pressure. Yeah. So what we're going to do, <laughs> Steph, is we're going to just yeah. take a quick break, allow you to get a drink of water and uh, take a step back. And yeah. uh, then we're going to be right back. Sound like a plan? Perfect. Thank you. All right. Our guest today is Stephanie Clark, and she's in Australia, and she's a trooper because she's up at 2.35 in the morning in Australia to do this for you. So round of applause for Stephanie. She is a rock star painter. If you didn't see her work earlier, she's just got some beautiful work, and uh, I'll show you a couple of them real quickly so you get a feel. Uh, so you're going to get to see her take this a little further. Stephanie's going to be a part of our uh, world-class faculty, uh, 25 incredible pastel painters from around the world, some of the top in the world, and uh, that's coming up August 17th through 19th. It's called Pastel Live, or as she says, Pastel Live. I'm getting excited and I'll, I'm getting ready to fly back to the studio in Austin, Texas and, uh, and uh, host this thing for you. We've got some new things this year. You're going to love it. Uh, anyway, also, I want to tell you guys that we have a webinar this week. It's actually tomorrow, July 20th at 2 p.m. And uh, it's called The Artist's Path, a seven-step roadmap for aspiring artists. What I figured out is that there were a lot of questions I keep asking and I thought, well, rather than just uh, keep answering those questions all the time. I'll get four experts, people who have done it, been there. Uh, Aaron Schur, Albert Handel, Jill Stephanie Wagner, William A. Schneider. They're going to be on with me. Uh, we're going to probably have a couple of hours. We're going to answer your questions. We're going to dig into what we can do to find our voice, what we can do to take ourselves to the next level. And so that is tomorrow, July 20th at 2 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I'll be hosting it, of course. And if you want to uh, sign up for it. If you didn't get an email from us or you don't know about it, go to plenairmagazine.com slash free dash webinar. One more time, plenairmagazine.com free dash webinar. Also, I got uh, Fall Color Week coming up here in the Adirondacks. Uh, that is the last time we're going to do Fall Color Week in the Adirondacks because we have so many other places to go. And the color is spectacular. You're going to love it. Uh, and I think we have I don't remember. I think we had like 20 seats left, maybe 17 seats left. It's going pretty fast. So go to fallcolorweek.com. Now we're going to get back to our guest, Stephanie Clark. Stephanie, you are a rock star yes. for staying up at 2.30 in the morning. Oh, it's lovely. I love it. 
right. thank you for having me. And I'm you're going to be very... teaching on Past Alive, um, yes. and, and you're going to be doing something entirely different. What are you going to do? Absolutely. I am going to create a pastel opera for you. Ooh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Indeed. There's some prima donnas, some prima ballerinas coming to your screen. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So I think now I'm going to start carving out a little bit of detail, matching my values. I'm looking at my orange and my pink. In nature, at any point, there has to be, um, you know, our complementaries, but there's also got to be somewhere that we that are just nice and quiet and, you know, we need the loud ones, we need the soft ones. So I think what we might do now is just start moving in some of these, um, our bigger, some of our bigger uh, florals and obviously these yellow ones are going to really, I have no idea what they are. They can be anything you want them to be. And we're going to start creating some of the, the big uh, in focus sort of um, flowers so using those our our change of value we're, we're just going to start moving a few things around i do believe i think i need to move in a little bit of a little bit of green like a lighter value of green to sort of calm things down if you if you do think oh gosh i've really gone a little bit light this is another beauty the beauty of uh, pastel is that you can just push it back you can manipulate it very easily you know um, don't be frightened of it it's it's an amazing medium it really is but i think what we might do is just move around a little bit of light. i uh, just... i my wife said you got a package and i opened the package and golden artist materials sent me this beautiful box of pan pastels which Oh, uh, I hadn't tried yet, so I'm really yeah. excited about that. They, yeah, I I use them to sketch in, and there's so many. The thing is, too, with pastel, like we were saying, there's so many applications. There's no right or wrong. It's however it feels good in your hand, and that that to me is like that's like gold, really, isn't it? It's, there's no there's uh. So there we go. I'm just going to start dancing these little ones through. And I, I kind of feel like they, they are telling me what I need to look at. I, all the way through, I'm, I'm assessing whether I have enough light in here. So if I think, oh, gee, I need to adjust those values, you need to do that before you go in with your focal flowers. See, that's better. There's a little bit more light in there. I'm happier with that. So gentle, gentle, just move that in. Beautiful. And it's like they're all looking at something. So for me, what are they looking at? Let's create the a point of interest. Like, why are these ladies all gossiping in here? Now, what are the things that you typically try to do to create a point of interest? Mm -hmm. And it usually is light related. Absolutely. I, I feel like you have to tell a story. It's uh, good art keeps you in the painting from to my way of thinking good art will keep you there and why is this interesting what's what's bringing me into this art that um is attractive like why why am i here tell me a story to me that's that's what i'm that's basically what i'm after and you know fields Fields and, and nature, you can use things as inspiration. They don't have to look like the painting, at, like the photo or what you see in front of you if you are plein air. You know, you can you can adjust it and tell the story to how, I want a little bit of pink in here. So, yeah, you can tell the story for how you, what you want to say. You're the, you're the um, you get to be the storyteller. It's, it's fabulous if you are a storyteller. Well, we all are. So, yeah, so I want to lean these ladies in. I want you to lean in and go, well, tell me the story. You know what I think it's missing? I think it, I would like just a couple of little daisies, just a couple of little daisies. So we'll just suggest a couple up in here in the light. And changing your values will um, definitely give you what you're after. So if you want to create depth, you need to have, you need to have your values that's better. Look at that. That's going to mm. start our start our journey down the road. So just um, adjusting. I think over here in the shadows, I've got a little bit of yellow. 
So I'm thinking, oh, a nice little complimentary blue might be good in there. And, you know, I don't want, I don't want them to be the, um, the main focus. So I, I'm able to, you know, be a little bit, I'm not abstract, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, just be a little bit daring with your strokes. And, daring. Yeah. Hello, Ireland, yeah. Wexford, Ireland. Welcome. If you guys are watching, if you haven't told us where you're watching from, make sure you put it in. Good job. Toronto. Sweden. Wow. I'll be in Sweden in a couple of months. So will I. Maybe we'll be there no, at the same time. I'm Maybe. Be I'm taking a group. Uh, I have a thing called a fine art tour. I do it every year, but I haven't done it for four years because of COVID. And uh, yeah. we're going to two cities and we go behind the scenes and the museums and the art studios. Oh, it's called finearttour.com and uh, finearttrip.com. And uh, we're going to Stockholm first. And then uh, we're going to go from there to Madrid. And we got some really cool things planned. Perfect. That sounds amazing. When are you going to be there? I'm going to be there in August, September, after, yeah. straight after Pastel Live. And I'm doing a... Um, a cruise of um, Norway, Greenland, Sweden, oh. all around the Nordic areas, and then the top of um, the Scottish Isles. And yes, I'm oh. having a break. <laughs> I've nice. had a very, <laughs> it's going to be amazing. I'm really looking forward to it. Nice. So, just almost, uh, you know, what we what we're doing here is simplifying, but we're also just deciding what we want to say, you know, so I, I really think it's so important that people are confident enough to follow, stop reading this and start reading this. Yeah. Well, yours is prettier. <laughs> Talk to us about complementary colors. You mentioned it before. Some people might not understand that. Yeah. So, um, I'm just I'm just going to tilt you down because I keep this. I keep these two things beside my um, on my wall. I don't paint on an easel. I paint on the wall, and the I, these stay on my um, these stay on my wall. Now, any time that you want, and nature does it for us. You have a look. What you know? What's opposite is what will work. So if there's purple, there should be yellow. There's purple. In there's other words, yellow. you want to put them beside. Side by side. Side by side because they, they complement one another. So um, that is something that I, I'm before I'm a, a, an actual artist, um, I'm a colorist. So I really love to exaggerate color. I love everything about color. And color is something in nature, color is something that, you know, nature's done all the hard work for us. The real creator has done all the hard work for us and we get to just we get to to play with with what is there and create here but the color wheel it simplified the color wheel is something that you should refer back to okay. each and every time and i do have it very simplified but it is um it is a, a very very important part one of the most important parts to me can you bring your easel our... uh, camera up just a little bit more so we can see the top yes, of your panel we can. there we go yep. and a uh, question from mary litvin uh, does stephanie pre-select her pastel colors Oh my gosh, no. If you could only see my pastels right now. No, I don't because I like to I like to have um I like to change. I like to have the opportunity to work with whatever I see. Like I'm assessing values the whole time that I'm painting. So if I think, oh, that really does need a little bit more light there, I, I will just snatch and grab. But my my um my um oh, i guess yeah for me that would limit me if you know what i mean yeah that would words, limit you want to be me. able yeah. to look and grab something oh, that appeals to you absolutely absolutely yeah. sorry i'm finding it hard to um yeah. <laughs> i'm chatting I love the way away that and you I'm... create form <laughs> just by adding that light it's wonderful you can really yes. see it in, in pastel much much easier than you could see it in other mediums. 
And the and the application, you can see, you know, when I first started, I was blending, I was doing, I was touching and moving and, and all the rest of it. But now it's I'm letting the pastels do all the hard work. I'm I'm asking them to with with what with how we apply them. I usually I, you'll never see a, a um, paper on any of my pastels because I like to use the full edge of the pastels. But at some point, sometimes you need to just use you know the end, the sharp ends, or a hard pastel to get the the pieces that we want. But look, it is just the best medium. So honestly, if you are a beginner, I would highly highly recommend having a go, having a turn at pastels and, and finding how it feels in your hand, finding how good it feels for you. Yeah. I, you know, I, I teach it all. And um, I, I've realized that probably the easiest way to learn art, if you've never done art before, is to start with yep. pastel. And right. uh, it, because it just, everything else complicates it, brushes and oils and, 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 and fleeting water and, and things like that. They're all good. Yeah. They're all good. This is, yeah, and this is super direct. Like you say, this is super direct. This is exactly what we're, you know, this is the this is why I'm just completely besotted with pastels because it's direct. It, it's in my hand and it's doing all the things that I want it to do. It's, and it's manoeuvrable. Like you make them, I don't even say they're mistakes, but if you make it something, you know, you put a mark down, you think, oh, golly, that wasn't really where I wanted that. But you know, you can go back in and you can yeah. you can go back in and, and manipulate it and go, oh, well, you know, I want a little bit more like that. Now, Stephanie Plasted is asking, once your picture is complete, do you seal it uh, to prevent no. smearing? And if so, with what? No, never, never. The only thing I will do is I will push, uh, I will get a piece of glassine paper and I'll lay the glassine paper over it and I will... Um, basically rub it in and push the um i'll push the the um pigment into the paper that won't smear so, no 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 glassine is just the bomb it's the best the bomb. it's the bomb it's the actual bomb <laughs> so all yeah, i do Sister I'll hunter just... guys says you are her new favorite pastel artist oh bless thank you so i just go over it like this Push that in, and I will. You yeah, sometimes you get a little bit of a um, a little mirror image, which is quite lovely sometimes. And then I will uh, usually just package it up and send it off, or I'll store it in my studio. Yeah. However, it works. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so but what no, I understand I, from talking to some artists, they say that if you seal it, it will dull the color. It absolutely dulls the colour, and I'm about the the vibrancy of pastel. I'm I'm in no way looking to dull anything. And for me, the the most pure pastels are a piece of paper, a bit of pigment, and yourself. That's for me. That's the joy that I get out of pastel. Is that yeah? I need to just have just us. It's just a just a one man band over here. <laughs> For the people who tuned in late, will you tell them again what yeah. kind of paper you're working on? I am absolutely. It is um, pastel mat by Claire Fontaine. It is a very smooth paper under a microscope. It looks like um, Velcro, and it is beautiful to work on. Beautiful. It is really super beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, so it is my preferred, absolutely, it's my preferred uh, paper. But look, I'd paint on a cardboard box if I had to. And for me, it's not about the pro, it's not about the finished painting because quite often I'd be more than happy to not, like I'd be happy to wipe that off and go again. Uh, it's about the process. It's the joy that I get from the process of painting rather than it's, it really is the process over product. I'm not interested in the, the finished product. I love this bit. I love this, you know, the the directness of the, everything about. I just love it so much. So I'm just going to do a little bit of, a little bit of, you know, dulling those values off and showing the the viewer. Okay, so this is not in the light, and that then lets me show that these are in the light. 
And then I think we might come along with just a couple of little highlights just to send your eye where exactly I want you to look. So All right. All right. I can, yeah, I can come down. Um, I've been painting for 11 years. You're doing pretty well so, for 11 years. Thank you very much. But it is dedication. It really is. And it's the love of of what we've got in front of us here. So you, so, you, you quit your job and became a full-time artist. I did. We got that a little took, whiff. That took some guts. <laughs> We got a little whiff that COVID was coming and um, early in the piece, uh, we knew that there was a, a nasty flu coming. We absolutely had no idea that it would be uh, a pandemic, but um, my husband said to me, look, your art's just taking off. Why don't you just resign and we'll, we'll do that? And as, you know, as a teacher, um, I'd done a little bit, but when COVID hit, it was huge. Like it just allowed me to, you know, we, we honestly, we had captive audiences because everyone was stuck at home. So it was perfect. It was really perfect because everybody's creativity came to the, to the top and it was fabulous to share. Well, with, one of the things so I'm a little bit, I, I think is really interesting is we, we thought that our events like Pastel Live would dry up once COVID left because we, yeah. we created them for COVID. And then we, yeah. we heard from so many people who said, you know, we can't attend your live events because we don't have the money or the time or we have family we have to take care of. So they've stayed yeah. uh, very healthy in spite of that. But there are a lot of people who made commitments to themselves during, um, during COVID. They got they took time, they became more creative, and they said, I'm going to do more of these things. And then yeah. uh, now that they're back to life, they've forgotten that. So it's really important to make sure that you continue to do those things that made you happy. Well, these, and that's exactly right. And these things are super important for our mental health. They are super, super important. And so, and allowing yourself creativity time is, it's such an important part of life. And, and even so, when you were working, how much time a day did you paint? Oh, look, some days I'd be, I'd come home at 7 p.m. and my, I'd, my husband would greet me at the door with a glass of wine and say, just go to the studio. But now I don't know if that's just because I'm a nicer person after a glass of wine or whether he just knew that I would be much happier if I was painting. Yeah. So I would probably, I, look, on average, I would have definitely come to the studio for half an hour. Because, I mean, you can sit down in front of the TV for half an hour. And, yeah. you know, I was I wanted to paint and this was where I got my, my you know, that wind down time. Some people go to the gym. Some people go for a run. For me, the wind down time is just putting something on paper. Yeah. Now, about now, I would start looking and going, have I said, have I told the story? Have I told you what I want you to know about this, you know, about this field. Is there is there anything else I need to say? So at this stage, I would then turn, I would take a photo of this, turn it to black and white and just check that I have um, my values correct for a start. Uh, and I, I honestly think this is one of the most important things for people to do is to check their values. So just, you know, grab your mobile phone, take a photo, turn it to black and white, and then you can see where things, whether the story is being told. I, Hold it up so I, we can see it. I will. Okay. I honestly believe, yeah, I absolutely. So, and it's it's easy, easy to do, you know, we just grab that and we switch it to black and white every phone has a black and white and i just check that i i've got everything attended to i'm pretty happy with that looks good so yeah so you know maybe maybe i just need to push i would say maybe i need to push a couple of these back just they're a little bit too in the forefront so just some nice little marks just to just to gently you know so they're not so loud just uh, push them back and, yeah. Well, now, it um, appears, Stephanie, that you're one of the favorite people we've ever had on this show. People are loving this. <laughs> oh, that's that's very kind. Maybe it was worth staying up till 2.30 in the morning. Absolutely. Oh, um, absolutely. Almost, <laughs> now, almost 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, you're gonna we're going to get you to bed here soon because we're going to have to we're going to end. Why don't you uh, – I know you're not done yet, but why don't you come back on camera so people can meet you. 
Certainly. Certainly. All right. Certainly. Our guest Hi. today is Stephanie Clark. And where in Australia are you, Stephanie? I'm actually at the top of the Great Dividing Range. So I'm about, I'm west of Sydney. So, um, but I, we live in the highest city in Australia. Right now it's um, minus five. Oh. So that's, I think Gavin said that's like 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah well, it's winter there. Summer yeah, here, winter is, there. Yeah, well, we are yep. so honoured that you would do this and we're excited that you're going to be on Pastel Live. Thank uh, you. In August. Thank, so you. We're, we're, thank you so much for doing that. Um, and you really inspired us today. So applause, everyone. This was absolutely fantastic. Thank yeah, you. Thank take you. a bow. And, <laughs> and so are you going to go to bed? You haven't been to bed yet? Or you stayed up? I, I, no, no, no. I've been to bed. I've had three hours sleep. And yes, I'll just wind down now. And um, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you, and, you are... Uh, so wonderful to do that. And I know you're going to be doing that on Pastel Live too. So thank you so much. Uh, you inspired us today. God bless you. And um, thank you. thumbs up everybody for Stephanie Clark. And we'll see you on Pastel Live. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for everybody for joining us. All right. Bye-bye. Well, that was uh, what a treat. What a treat. As It's interesting. My colleague, Allie, uh, actually, it's the first time she's ever commented on this program in two and a half or three years. She said, I'm inspired. I'm going to go out and get some pastels. So uh, congratulations on that. I think it's pretty cool. Well, we're here every day at 12 noon. If you are not a subscriber, we would love it. Uh, we got to 100,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube in December. That's pretty cool. There's a subscribe button uh, right, right down there. Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube. And there's a little bell. Uh, click that bell. That way you get a notification when we go live. And uh, we're here every day, 12 noon. We live most of the time, but not all the time. Sometimes I have to get some work done. And uh, we're excited about Pastel Live coming up. And, and uh, I want to remind everybody, we have a webinar tomorrow. We can just bring that up one more time real quickly. The webinar is uh, with four incredible artists. Aaron Schur, Albert Handel, Jill Stephanie Wagner, and William A. Schneider, all fabulous artists, all master artists. And we're going to talk about the artist path, step, seven step pathway roadmap for aspiring artists. And no matter what kind of artist you are, whether you're a watercolor, acrylic, wash, oil, pastel, anything, uh, this is going to be really good for you to be on. That's tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that is July 20th, depending on where you're watching, 2 p.m. Eastern. Go to plenairmagazine.com slash free dash webinar. And that way you can sign up for that. Thanks again for tuning in. And uh, thank you to my producer, Amandine. Uh, we will see you on the other side tomorrow.